Welcome to the Voices of E-Commerce podcast. I'm your host, John Drake. Join us as we talk with some of the exciting minds working in e-commerce today. It's an honor of, of Kate and Kara. We honor you. We honor you with Dr. Gift Pepper. of Dr. Pepper. Dr. <laughs> Pepper. Gotta love it. There's uh, a story, of course. Just what the doctor ordered. <laughs> <laughs> I liked my Dr. Pepper, but I couldn't keep my Dr. Pepper after Obamacare. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, so. May, may not tell that story. Anyway, um, so I'm here with uh, Amy and Robert Nessier, um, and my two really good friends from Michigan, and uh, they started a podcast right around the same time I did. So uh, I guess, what, two months ago or so? Um, three so, months. Three months? Yeah. Um, well, it's weekly, and there have been 21 episodes. That's four months. Time is flying. What is with this year? Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. So, yeah, I, I, I can't remember when my first interview, but I think it was around May, but I didn't publish till June. Um, so it's been a couple months for me as well. Um, so, um, so I was going to kind of make this very informal and um, doing this from home, and as are you guys, and I'm... So not my office. I'm using Zoom, and I usually use WebEx, and um, everything is different. Uh, so something's probably bound to crash and burn, but we're going to try it anyways and see what happens. So, uh, yeah. is our audio good on your side? I can hear you fine. Yeah, sounds good. So, excellent. Um, so there's really only about three things to talk about, but the general focus was on starting a podcast since we've both done it now and thought it'd be fun to talk about a little bit about that process. Um, and that way we could share it with, uh, um, my audience or your audience or whomever and, uh, see if there's anything people can take away. With it. So, um, let's, uh, why don't we get, why don't you get to tell me about your podcast? What is it and, um, why you picked the topic? <laughs> Yeah, the podcast is called Five Minutes with Robert Nasser. <laughs> Have any of them lasted five minutes? Mm, they've all lasted five minutes. At least. Um, at least five <laughs> minutes. <laughs> we, we've left the, the explanation of the title uh, a little cryptic. The show does generally run substantially longer than five minutes. And the podcast grew out of my retirement from information technology. I decided that I had done that enough. And it was time to move into a, a career that addressed my other interests. Mm -hmm. I spent the first third of my career as a restaurant manager, the second third of my career as an IT technician. But my interest in uh, wisdom, in, in life enhancing ideas and technology, and in philosophy, and as you know, I'm especially a fan of Ayn Rand's philosophy of objectivism. But more broadly than that, my interest in wisdom has been growing and growing and growing and snowballing over the years. So I've decided to write a book on wisdom. Hmm. Nice. And in conjunction with that, as I put together notes on the topic, we decided it would be a great idea to put some of those ideas out there in the form of a podcast. That's where the podcast came from. Okay. And uh, it's challenging because there are so many uh, self-help and success and flourishing oriented podcasts, some of which that have just started this year about mm -hmm. the same time we did. Mm -hmm. That you know, yeah, when there's a pandemic and everyone's at home and got nothing else better to do. The more podcasts, the better, yeah. really. Well, I've yeah. riffed on that. You know, there are, there are some things you should never do during these challenging times. One of them is you don't learn to play the ukulele. <laughs> the world doesn't need another ukulele player out there putting videos on, on TikTok or YouTube. Mm -hmm. And you don't start a podcast because you don't have anything to say that there's not already somebody out there saying. And you think you're really good at this, but you're really not. So that that's the ideas that have been floating around the webosphere. Yeah. And naturally, being the kind of guy I am, I learned to play the ukulele a month or so ago with my daughter, mm -hmm. and I started a podcast now three, four months ago. Mm -hmm. How could you resist when everybody says, that's one of the worst things you could do? <laughs> and it has been enormously satisfying. It's so, great. So that's what it grew out of, was essentially my third career. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Um, I mean, I was, uh, so 
you know, I, I didn't even consider the thought that I'm not good at this because to me is the only way I'm going to get better is yeah. if I do it. Um, right. Great point. And, yep. and so I, and no one ever gave me that feedback that, you know, that this is a bad idea or that why are you doing this? Um, mm -hmm. But it kind of came naturally to me because I had just written my textbook on e-commerce Yes. And I had to focus on looking at the different stakeholders, the different people making decisions. And, you know, I thought it was a good book and it's so far it's been adopted by a few places, but it really got me to think, it was like, wait a minute here. Do, am I still talking to people that are doing this and sure that what I'm writing about is right? Mm -hmm. um, or are there things I need to reconsider? Or um, so that's where the idea first originated from. But then I was like, all right, how can I combine what I'm doing and how can I make better synergies going forward too? So I was like, well, maybe I can do research from this. Maybe I can um, even monetize it sometime down the road where, you know, put ads or sponsorships or whatever that's long-term, you know, maybe if I'm really lucky a couple of years from now. So I'm not, that's not the primary purpose is to make money, but it's certainly something I haven't, you know, ignored. Um, so it's, uh, but yeah, so I, I like it though. I, I mean, it's, so the book idea is kind of a synergy that we kind of both have. You're right in yours. Um, That's right. Now, you brought up a great point there. In preparation for talking to you, I spent three minutes, five minutes, yeah. very last minute. It's been a crazy week. No, yeah. no, wait, wait. One thing in a podcast, never apologize and never point out your own weaknesses. So in the five minutes that I budgeted for preparation for this podcast, <laughs> yes, yes. I wrote down four things. Mm-hmm that may be worth discussing. And one of them was, because I figured it would come up early in the conversation, you will never be ready. Mm -hmm. You will never have your plan perfect. You will never be good enough to actually start your podcast. So it's funny that you brought that up because that's exactly right. How are you gonna get any good at this? Well, the answer is by doing it. Yeah. We brought up uh, you know, Gladwell's rule, which really wasn't Gladwell's rule, but he's the one who's made it popular this notion that you have to spend 10,000 hours on something right, right. good at it. Yeah. And even though that's a bit of an exaggeration, there's real wisdom in that idea. So you, we did exactly right. what you're talking about, which is we weren't really ready to start the podcast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For example, it's just this week that I'm getting on Libsyn so that I can get uh, Apple syndication. We're, we're late in a lot of stuff. Sure. Mm -hmm. sure. But, but we did start this 21 weeks ago because... Yeah, if you, if you don't start, you'll, you'll never start. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and the journey of doing it, you learn things along the way, of course, and you learn, you know, you figure out what you, what you do need and what you are missing and all of that. And on top of that, you learn things like, I didn't think I was going to be at all ready for this. Um, I didn't think that I was even going to be um, a content, like, like even... <laughs> a little bit ready for this and I didn't expect to have so much to say and I didn't expect to 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 be able to do what I do and, and what I do on the podcast <laughs> you didn't realize you end up with a fan base um well I kind of already had a fan base a little bit. anyway <laughs> your glow but um yeah, and, sure. and it's, it's lovely to have fans and uh and I love to be a fan of people so that's pretty cool yeah. wonderful yeah. spiritual trade there so yeah. but you know it's interesting because i really have to hone in my powers of multitask mm. um keep keep up with this guy um keep up with the people in the comments right. um, try to figure out what else to say um next and um come up with a lot of the stuff i do very extemporaneously and uh it all works itself out it actually falls into place. It actually comes out sometimes very well. Mm -hmm. So, and those, those are wonderful moments. So definitely define what you want to do and why, but don't let that stop you from taking action. That's, that would be, since so, you brought up, well, why did you do a podcast? Yeah. That would be a yeah. lesson from our start is. So now do you guys, when you started this, did you have an audience in mind? I, I guess you say, I know you talk about objectivism. Mm -hmm. Um, and so what we're using, I, I think you might've already mentioned this a bit, but, um, more people that are new to objectivism or people that have some experience, where, where are you trying to, I yeah, mean, my, why did you go through that process? My ultimate target audience in that sense of, well, who do I want to reach that I'm not already reaching mm -hmm. is a uh, general audience. Mm -hmm. general. So 
one point that I've made is this is not an objectivist podcast. Gotcha. It's a podcast by objectivists. Yeah. For the general population. For the general population. Because gotcha. some of those topics that we get into are, are a little fringe, a mm -hmm. little touchy feeling. Yep. And um, I wouldn't want anybody to uh, think that we think that we are living up to the standards of an Ayn Rand Institute, for example. Sure, right, right. right. Um, this is not that. And I don't want it to be that. Yeah. Because right. I, I'm trying to reach a larger audience. Right. Um, so my target audience is, is the human flourishing movement even more than the philosophy side of it. Yeah. Right, right. I like that. That's very cool. Very cool. And I, I take it your book is going to be geared that way as well? It is. It's, it's going to be as much a handbook as anything else. Nice. Um, the angle for my book is the things that you need to know to live well mm -hmm. that you may have missed and what you should have gotten out of the experiences that you missed. Mm -hmm. Now, whether that's a class that you should have taken, you know, elements in philosophy you should have learned, or very practical things. One of the examples I give is uh, Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts. Mm -hmm. If you've been through Cub Scouts or Boy Scouts, if you've earned your badges, if you've gone through some of the projects that just about everybody who does that does, if you've worked with a leader, if mm -hmm. you've had that in your childhood, you have something that people who haven't had that don't have in their pocket. Mm -hmm. You've got an asset, a tool. And whether you got a lot out of it or only a little bit out of it, there's some wisdom that came from that experience. And so what I've done is I've talked to uh, uh, Cub Scout leaders to find out, well, what was that thing? So that I can say in 25 words or less, or maybe in 25 paragraphs or less, mm -hmm. hey, have you ever went to Scouts? Here's the thing that you missed, and here's how you can compensate for that. Mm -hmm. Or if you've never been on a fire walk, you know, kind of a fire walk weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, Tony Robbins kind of thing. Ouch. Why would anybody do that? Well, people do that and they come back transformed or at least, you know, in some way improved or yeah. changed. And yeah. so my purpose is I want to be able to tell people, yeah, you don't have to go on a fire walk. Here's what you get out of the fire walk experience. And here's the bit you can't get without going through that experience. Mm -hmm. Assuming you're not going to, here's what you can do. So right. that's the point of the book is, is, is practical wisdom mm -hmm. um, with, with this sort of compensating model. Right. Nice. Yeah. Very and, cool. Yeah. And by having a different angle on things in our podcast, hopefully we're providing a little of that every week to people who are going to say unconditional love or, or, or letting go or things which, you know, even objectivists would sometimes bristle at. Hopefully we can give people a bit of wisdom. Right. Uh, Put it in context and give options. Yeah. yeah. People who use these crazy ideas, what are they actually getting out of them? And can right. I get that without adopting crazy ideas? <laughs> right. Why do people jump out of an airplane with a, with right. a, with a piece of cloth attached to their back? <laughs> That's right. And, and, yeah. and their lives change afterwards. Right. Right. Uh, we've got a friend of ours who, who did that. Yes. And, well, my, and, one of my best friends. <laughs> Oh, yeah. both, both what yeah. led her to that point, but also what flowed from that experience yeah. have taken her to different places. It's amazing. It's yeah. like when I ran a marathon, you know, and, and I did it once, but it was an important part of a defining part of knowing that I could do a long term project that and, and pushing my body to the limits and, and, yep. and past. And yeah. So, yes, you, you are now the man who did that and is capable of that, and that that changes things. It does. Yes. It does, and it gives me a sense of you know, um, not, not just pride, but more of a sense of um, um, knowledge in my own abilities that I can then take forward into other things. So, yes, and and a feeling of uh, you've broadened yourself in the universe. You 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 put right. yourself out in a more broad way in the universe, mm -hmm. and um, uh, you know, you definitely. <laughs> You, you get a, at least an incremental, you know, sense or advantage of um, I, I am um, uh, more worldly or I'm more part of this world. Yeah, and broader than that, because if I can do that, what other self-imposed limitations can I now question and right. transcend? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, you know, you, you've done it, so you know. Yeah. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> 
Oh, it's, it's something that we did um, actually with my uh, my the friend that I was talking about with her help. Um, we went to mm. Warrior Dash. Warrior and um, the Dirty Dog Dash. Yeah, very fun. Sounds very, like it. Yeah, very muddy and dirty and. And yeah, really, I've looked into doing a few of those, and um, while well, back in January, um, since then I really haven't had many opportunities to do any right. of those. So, although I, I did um, follow through on a, I did want to do a race this year, and I had to like a running race. I've been getting back into running, uh, mm -hmm. and like the last three or four years, I'm like I really want to do it, and I just kept putting it off. And then the pandemic hit. I'm like, well, now what the hell am I going to do? And mm -hmm. fortunately, a friend of mine who is does a lot of running and races posted about a virtual race yes. mm -hmm. basically you just it's on your honor system but you time yourself over a certain distance and you submit that and then you get some swag from it and i can yep. you know i didn't bring my glass with me but yeah um it was so i got to do it and so i'm, I'm happy i met my goal for the year Excellent. yes that's really good so, <laughs> anyway um so back to podcasting uh, so your audience is the general population um interested in wisdom uh and how it can be used um so you guys um are on youtube and i and i can't remember if we recorded the part where you said you mentioned you're moving to apple podcasts but uh, how did you first pick youtube as your starting platform yeah you know, I, I did it perhaps backwards the way i should which is i decided in advance what my standards were and then i figured out okay now how do i do that so I knew I wanted it to be a live mm -hmm. show. Okay. And I knew I wanted video. Okay. And when we started earlier this year and when I was looking at it last year, it was surprisingly difficult to get good answers on how you do that. <laughs> I was surprised. Right. I would ask people who had established live video podcasts and they couldn't even tell me how to do it. <laughs> you know, somebody that they knew who knew right. the technology. Mm -hmm. had figured out, oh, well, and I could tell you in 10 seconds what it takes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, get a program called Open Broadcast Studio. Okay. It's called Restream.io. Okay. It's all you need to know. Find out how those two things work, and you're done. And if somebody had told me that, they could have saved me literally months of research. Right, right. Given that information I just gave you in 10 seconds. So those were my two starting points. Was I want video. Mm -hmm. I want it live. And, and the reason set. is you, you give a different experience, you give a different performance doing something live than you do recorded. Yeah. That's We've done true. videos that were recorded and those are fun because you could edit out all the bad stuff. But not only that, you can do clever things and you can do right. these quick cuts yeah. and you can do really funny things. Yeah. yeah. yeah but there's nothing uh, more exciting about something you know it's, it's live it's um <laughs> there's yeah. no editing and even um, if you don't listen to it yeah. live you get a different product yes and i decided that product is what i want that's i mean it, it reminds me of the difference between uh, teaching face to face and doing it live versus doing a recorded lecture that i give to students um, 100% it's exact same feeling that I get from it. So I can certainly see why that appeals to you. That's it. It really is. And especially if you want it to be educational. Yeah. yeah and it's not just, um, YouTube. It's simultaneously on YouTube and Facebook. Oh, is it? Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, we actually have a lot more viewers uh, on, on Facebook. Facebook live than we do on YouTube. Yeah. We'll get a hundred people watching on Facebook and we'll get a dozen people watching on YouTube. Yeah. Now, so. I'm sorry. Um, I'm curious about that technology. So, um, it's does it show you like this the comments on like two different sets of comments coming in, or are they combined somehow? Are they, are they different? different. So the, I have to go back and forth. And the studio, the, this OBS Open Broadcast Studio, does combine the comments. Mm -hmm. um, so there is that. And if I had a really big screen, I might use them, but they're kind of small in the system. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So um, our way of doing this is we have multiple laptop computers run. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the computer we happen to be talking to you on Zoom right now, we would normally have a HDMI fancy video camera right now. We're just on a webcam. And that would be doing the podcast or the, the show, sending it out. And then over to the side here, I would have a laptop showing me the YouTube feed and another laptop 
showing me the Facebook feed. Yeah. And the advantage of that, not only can I see the comments separately and keep an eye on, mm -hmm. but I can see if one of the shows hangs up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you have any like, technical problems? I'm not just trusting the system. Right. I see in real time, oh, yeah, things are working. Yeah, the next step that we need to do for Facebook is um, create a page, an actual um, uh, page, a public page for you. Yeah. Because right now you can only see if uh, you're friends with Robert <laughs> and um, on Facebook. So. And what is it that you can only see if you're friends with Robert? Uh, the video on Facebook live streaming. It's and just on your wall. That should not be the case. Really? Because, I mean. Everything I do, I post publicly. Oh, I see what you mean. Very but rarely you, do anything friends only. Anymore. Well, I should say this in a marketing perspective. Yes. And, and yes. Come in and yeah, I just did that recently too. I created a page for my podcast and yes. posted to e-commerce. And yeah. I mean, we brought that up. Yeah. I mean, we do have a five minutes with Robert Nacer page, but I don't know if that's private or public. I don't know. We'll have to take no, a look. That one should be public too. Pages oh. are usually public. I think groups are could be public or private. My friends who are into internet security, and then that's a worthy thing to be into, mm -hmm. are scandalized by how much I do that is public. Mm -hmm. I do, I do have you know, uh, agencies watching my credit and all those other things mm -hmm. because yes, once you open yourself up, you're, you're pretty wide open. Yeah. yeah, and we're using our real names and. You know, we're not talking about everything about ourselves, but I mean, yeah. really, you can find. Um, well, yeah. And that was a, a little bit about that us. That was a tough decision <laughs> to make too. Is do I use my existing public profiles or do I create something new mm -hmm. for this? Right, right. And you asked about my target audience. Mm -hmm. The initial target audience is people I already know, people who already want yeah. to hear. Right, right. Mm -hmm. My next audience is my wider circle of friends. Who don't really have any interest in that, but who might be willing. And then friends of friends and friends of friends, and ultimately um, the objectivist community. Mm -hmm. Beyond the objectivist community, the general public. So it's it's. So the question: Do I create a whole new persona and profile and presence on Facebook and accounts on YouTube, all associated with the podcast? Mm -hmm. And I decided, and this might turn out to be the wrong decision. I'd be interested in feedback on this. I decided, no, I'm going to capitalize on everything I've already got out there. Mm. So I'll be creating an updated robertnacer.com. Right, right. In my YouTube, I'm just going to use my existing YouTube account. Mm. Because I want that address to be associated with the podcast, youtube.com slash robertnacer, facebook.com slash robertnacer. So everything that's already got my name on it out there is the ideal place to find me and my podcast. For other people, separating those out is going to make a lot more sense. Yeah, I kind of did something similar. Like I already had a YouTube channel um, that's been around seven, eight years. Um, and actually all that I had really on there were a bunch of lectures that I had recorded way like, five, six years ago. And I put up there uh, and just left them. I almost forgot about them. Uh, and surprisingly, I went back and like, wow, I have 800 subscribers. <laughs> wow, well. Um, a bunch of lectures I did, you know, six years ago, just random people occasionally will subscribe to me and, and without any marketing or effort on my part. Um, and so I was like, well, I'll take advantage of that. Uh, and so I just created uh, on YouTube that was a playlist and I'm making the playlist the voices of e-commerce. Now the podcast, the, the audio version, that's completely new. That's only really, that's the one I think I'm expecting to be the slowest to grow. Is mm -hmm. because it's not associated with my name, or I, I mean, I guess you could call it my brand, but it's you have personal brands. But um, and then where was I going? Oh, yeah, I'm also posting it on my website, professordrake.com. So, mm -hmm. um, but so yeah, I mean, I, I think absolutely if you have that option, or if you already have a name established for whatever, and I know you guys have done a lot with you know, the great like Objectivist Club and um that people know you and they respect you. And so using that is a good thing. <laughs> Certainly helped us get our start. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, what did I see? You're already over a hundred subscribers, yeah. right? On YouTube and I don't know about Facebook. Do you, uh, I don't know how that works on Facebook. It's more just your friends, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, there's uh, over, uh, probably about 130 people on the, um, uh, the Five Minutes with Robert Nacer uh, webpage. Or the yeah, we separate group for that. 
Yes. Yeah. We have a separate group. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I can get my, I don't even know what the number is, thousand or two thousand friends to all yeah. get involved. That would be a good thing too. Yeah. We'll yeah. On that. But that's part of the reason too that I'm, I'm really focusing on a general audience. Mm -hmm. yeah. Those have interest with objectivist leanings, but I would hope anybody could get something out of what we're yeah. offering. Yeah. Yeah. And back to your question before, I know I had, I had answered it um, in our pre show. Yeah, right. <laughs> Um, with regard to um, why we chose um, uh, YouTube and showing our faces and all of this. And, um, and uh, yeah, I, I had thought it was very important to make sure that we presented ourselves um, as real human beings, not just voice, not just disembodied voices. People could actually see our, you know, faces, oh, yeah, yeah. Our reactions, our body language, especially when we're dealing with um, more obtuse ideas. Um, philosophy and wisdom and, and psychology mm -hmm. even and um, and also um, considering the history of objectivism and the yeah. kind of um, objectionist stigma and the let's see what's wrong with the world <laughs> let's, yeah. yeah right right <laughs> see what everything is wrong in the world right so um uh, so yeah to present that kind of positive image where people can actually relate to and and mm -hmm. see themselves doing. Um, I know I had a start, you know, when I was, gosh, 13 or maybe even younger than that, where I felt, um, where I had experiences where, or cognitive experiences, where I had thoughts of that, that were semi, semi philosophical. Mm -hmm. And I, I kept pursuing those. I kept pursuing those. I kept asking. I kept questioning. And I kept coming up with answers too. And then I finally mm -hmm. found that I ran when I was 16. And, mm -hmm. and, um, and I had discovered all these other philosophies and all of these other sorts of uh, systems of, um, you know, what is the nature of the universe? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that question. Um, and philosophical, um, I'm sorry, psychological questions as well. And I found answers to those. And, um, I've never stopped trying to learn about those. And I'm really hoping that more and more people will stop giving into that kind of cynicism and that kind of skepticism that a lot of people fall into where they really don't think that they can understand a certain subject or, or figure out what the solutions are to certain problems in the world. Um, so I'm really hoping that, you know, um, more, the more podcasts, the better again, and, and really, I really love the idea of showing our faces. You know, this is who we are. This is how we think, and um, and we're and we're friendly folk. So, yeah, that's that's. I think when I started, I am envisioned an audio only version, and but I was like, no, no, YouTube's pretty popular. Let's put it up there. Um, I honestly, now I think I'm more leaning. I, I'm enjoying that more. I mean, I can see situations where people want the audio only version just because. They travel a lot. You know, I, I talked to some friends of mine who um, it, he's like, I, I listen to podcasts and audiobooks all the time when I'm driving and it's driving a lot. Uh, yeah. So he wants that capability. Um, uh, even someone like Alex Rin, um, still talking to him regularly. And oh. uh, yeah, <laughs> but he, he listens to podcasts quite often. And it's because he likes to be able to do other things um, while he'll listen. And um, <laughs> One thing, the, the thing that we're doing that's um, being live and everything like that, no editing, no putting up images or whatever, um, it's very um, applicable to just listening to. Yeah. You don't have to look at us unless you really want to. Right. <laughs> just to get um, an idea of who we look like, you know, what we look like and who yeah. we are and um, the kind of people we are. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, from then on, I, once we get syndication and everything like that, a lot mm -hmm. of it's going to be consumed audio only. It's right. funny in that because I had forgotten and I need to give her credit. You know, you know, our friend Jyoti. Oh, yeah. She was one of the first people to say, you've got to be on YouTube. And this is back when I was thinking about the audio being more important than the video. Mm -hmm. nice she said, well, uh, her and her mate, Kevin, they are Android users. And they said, well, nobody with Android... Uh, uses a podcast app. So nobody, I know they're out there. It's what yeah, right, right. Stitcher, and Stitcher, whatever they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Spreaker, the Spreaker. other one, yeah. Uh, and Google's now got their thing. She said, no, 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 no. People with Android phones, they just go to YouTube. They just do everything on YouTube. 
I went to my daughter. She's an Android person. She said, yeah, I pretty much do everything on YouTube. <laughs> There's no videos, even if it's just a black screen with a title. Yeah, yeah it's all YouTube. Mm -hmm. so that was another reason why we went right to YouTube mm -hmm. and Facebook Live. Okay. Is because of people we you know using those technologies. Okay. And yeah, yeah. You look up the numbers online and you're like, oh, okay, that's a big. Well, YouTube is the what second most used website in the world. Yeah. So I think after Google, um, or is it Facebook? I don't know. I forget which number one now. But uh, yeah, Google or YouTube is number two. Um, and so, yeah, um, it's the place to be. Yep. Well, I don't know how much more time we have left because I'm on the free version of a Zoom call, which gives me 40 minutes. Oh. Um, <laughs> So, uh, and, and we're heading right into 40 minutes. So if we get cut off suddenly, um, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, but I uh, just uh, wanted to <laughs> let you guys know that, that there is that limit. Um, so at any rate, um, what, else is, what, what else have you learned through this process you think is worth talking about? Yeah, I started with a few principles and some of them have played out reasonably well. One thing that I, I started with in the beginning, and I believe it's, it's played out to be true, is if you want to be a podcaster or a broadcaster of any kind, learn to listen to your own product. Mm, yeah. The one advantage that, that I've got is I am willing to listen to my own podcast. I'm still working on this. I know a lot of people have <laughs> the sound of their own voices or their own mistakes, their own verbal tics. I didn't realize I say like five times in every sentence. <laughs> it's enormously powerful, at least for me, just in terms of my self-possession. Mm -hmm. Know what I sound like and to visit that after the show. And I you know, listen to the podcast like right after the show started over again. Mm -hmm. I'll generally hear every podcast we do well before I plan the next one. Mm -hmm. yeah. It helps me with... That's a great point. Yeah, it helps me both manage my voice, my state my presentation style, the flow of my sentences, but it also helps me with continuity and going from one show to the next show, which matters a little bit in a, in a podcast like ours. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. think at least is an asset for any show. So that's one of, the, one of the tips I would give you was learn to listen to your own stuff. Unless it's an absolute deal breaker and you'll never start a podcast because you hate your own voice. But <laughs> then I would question why that is the case and don't give up and say, no, I'm not going to podcast. But yeah, learn to listen to your own stuff. Yeah, I, I, and the way I do it, since mine are recorded interviews, I like to go back over and re-listen to it so I can take notes and then write up a description of the podcast, you know, like what are the key points that we talked about. Um, but I've learned to have to listen to myself. And it's been the same, same out, uh, thing that you said is I've learned to appreciate my own little tics. I've learned to, my wording, my... Uh, cadence, all those things are things you pick up on. And if you're really trying to improve, you, agen you start internalizing some of those things that you're doing and can then during the next one have it just a little bit better. Maybe a few less ums, maybe a few less uh, stumbling over mm -hmm. parts, maybe have a better, more rehearsed intro. Um, now, this podcast, I specifically completely threw out my usual intro. Um, and <laughs> because I wanted it to be completely different. Um, and so, but, you know, and it started with you holding up your, you know, Dr. Pepper can. I don't know if I'll cut that out or if I'll leave that in, but <laughs> it's there. I like the, I like the quirky bits because then people wonder. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's why I might just leave it in because I think it sounds fun. Um, you may just make things sticky enough that that person sticks around. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> They'll be like, what the hell? This is with Dr. Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and it's good. It's, uh, right. It, it helps to have an interesting personality. <laughs> well, yeah. 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 <laughs> like one thing I've realized too is I've, I think my first few interviews, I struggled with trying to monitor all the different parts, like being able to read the questions, paying attention to what they're saying, be mm -hmm. thinking ahead of what I want to cover, or if they say something interesting, having a follow up question that, and I know, and I think I heard this on um, a interview with um, um, Tim Ferriss, who does a podcast. Um, yeah. And 
uh, he has said that same thing like early on. It's that's something you have to learn to deal with all these different aspects to it. But I could see my mind working and I, I wasn't smooth. I wasn't natural. In it. And that's where I want to get to where it's natural and it's fun and I enjoy it. Yeah. So I'm getting there. Uh, hopefully you are as well. It always helps with that too. Yeah. Whether that turns out to be a hundred hours or a thousand hours, I don't think it's going to be. Yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> like putting your mind in the context of all three past, present and future. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> keeping dabs on all those. It's, yeah, well, it goes it's my, great fun. My principle of opening your eyes a little wider. Yeah. 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 Strangest thing. If you open your eyes a little wider, you become more aware. <laughs> Neurolinguistic programming, body language, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yes. If you open your eyes a little bit wider, mm -hmm. you become a little yes. more aware, whether it's past, present, future, or just broader context. Right. 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 Yeah, it is. Yeah. So, Amy, any, uh, any, thing that you've learned along the way interesting or that's yeah some um, it's very commensurate with um, my experience running great lakes objectivists okay uh, it's very uh very very satisfying and i get to you know discuss things with robert and i get to ask questions that come up on facebook and youtube and um, it's really, really just a great amount of fun. It, it's something that I've kind of, you know, you never realize, um, sometimes you go through a new experience and you think to yourself, wait a minute, I actually had experience in doing this. Mm -hmm. I was more prepared than I thought I would be. And, uh, yeah, so you have all, all these soft skills, um, that you've learned along the way that actually apply to so much. Um, and it's, it's, so yeah, it's, it's just such a great, um, opportunity to, um, to talk about things that are interesting, to, to really get excited and jazzed about these ideas and um, to put them out there and have that satisfying experience of being right. the people. Right. You know, in connection with that too, a surprising lesson I learned, which won't apply probably to 80% of the folks out there, but if you have a co-host, learn to trust your co-host. <laughs> It was the finest thing because I'll, I, I always have notes. I have extensive notes for every show we do. Yeah. Right. And so I'm kind of running the show. Mm -hmm. And often I'll be in the middle of a page of notes and I need to get from here to here. And halfway through, Amy will say, oh, wait. <laughs> and she'll talk about something, whether it's for seconds <laughs> or five minutes. Yeah, right, right. Like, well, I, yeah, but that's really taking me away from I need to get to this next thing. That's really the instruction. <laughs> I want to get. Yeah. And I'm going to listen to the podcast afterward, and only after hearing it, but not when I heard it live, do I realize, well, that took us somewhere great, or that really amplified what I and I didn't realize at the time. Yeah. So trust your co-host. Yeah. 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 Especially when she's really smart. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are smarter, yeah, there's but I am myself. So that's she's awesome. That's what we all need to uh, to do is be ourselves, mm -hmm. put ourselves out in the world, expand our universe. Yeah, and that would kind of get us back to the final lesson, which is enjoy this thing, whatever yes. you've decided right. to do. Right, have a great time right. with it because you're not going to be great. Unless yes. you have a great time with it. Yeah, there are moments that like tomorrow we're going to feel this. I'm going to have the feeling that, oh, no, this is a chore. <laughs> and when I get into it, then we start doing it. And I'm like, this is easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And I, I get through it fine. Our, our topic last week was grit. Oh, yeah. Grit defined as passion plus perseverance. Okay. And something I would advise people to find in themselves is put your passion into this and realize it's also going to take perseverance. So approach it with grit. Yeah. Nice. I like that. I like that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm going to have to watch that episode because that's, that's a good one. I, I bet that there's a lot of stuff. Oh, it's one of those episodes. This will happen to you too. We came into it real loose. Yeah. I had maybe an hour, hour and a half worth of planning done mm -hmm. and then a few resources to draw on. Mm -hmm. And it all came together in a way that was very satisfying and I think very valuable to the people watching it. Even though it was one of those loose episodes where I wasn't giving a lecture, I wasn't reading an essay. Yeah, right, right. 
us talking about grit. Mm -hmm. Very cool. All right. Well, guys, uh, I'm I'm out of questions. So unless you have questions for me, I mean, I'm, I'm about done. <laughs> We have questions for you. Um, oh my gosh! Well, they're they're more. I don't know how related well, my, to podcasts they are, but <laughs> one, one, one question I would have is: What podcasts do you listen to? Because there's so many out there right now. I'm I'm lately finding myself bouncing around a little, and I used to be much more dedicated. Yeah, I mean, I, I've um, for I'm um, longtime listeners of Econ Talk, and then. Um, Tim Ferriss's, um, uh, well, what's his podcast called again? Um, I guess it's the Tim Ferriss podcast or whatever. I can't remember. Um, so those two, I, uh oh, it says my internet connection is unstable. I don't know what that means. You guys still there? Oh, no. I hope I'm not losing you. Internet. There, there you are. Wait. Yes, some internet problems. I heard Tim Ferriss. Tim Ferriss, of course, is always worth listening. Yes. There you are. Uh, yeah, I'm back. I'm back. So, yeah, no, uh, I said the two that I've, for a long time, have yeah. been Econ Talk and the Tim Ferriss um, podcast. But lately, I've added a couple, um, including Brett Weinstein. And uh, what was the other one I picked up? I'm drawing a blank now. I would have to look at my uh, my iPhone and see what, but yeah. So, um, and, and I, I'm I'm probably going to explore a little bit more. I want a little more variety and really looking at. So I've I've been doing a lot of thinking lately about, well, current state and well, how to prepare myself for the future. Um, so that's one of the big things that I was on my mind, especially with a you know a family, and I want. I, a lot of uncertainties with the economy and the world and where do I want to be and where, what, my, what place do I want to have in it? Um, so I'm kind of searching around right now for podcasts that could help spark ideas and thoughts on how to move forward in that regard. Um, so I, yeah. Um, and I guess I do listen to a number of YouTube videos too. Um, the Ruben report is one. Um, I've done a little bit of Don Watkins, uh, Yarn Brook. Um, I, I am interested in some of their videos and, and even Don Watkins, he's got, uh, although he did, I actually don't listen to any of his objectivism stuff. I listen to his, you know, how to create a platform and spread ideas because mm -hmm. I'm like, well, that's what I'm doing. So, <laughs> um, I really like those. So, um, yeah. So that's about it. How about you guys? Well, again, I'm kind of bouncing around. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I am too. Amy, of course, loves her mysteries and true crime. So, <laughs> so as much I mean, as those does. weirdos who listen yeah. to true crime. Right. <laughs> Most people do. Yeah. Yeah. Not all the time, but um, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. It's a good thing to me because you can still find listeners. I have this feeling from time to time that why would anybody listen to me? Everything I've got to say has either been said better by somebody else or. Mm -hmm. Or at least there are better presenters out there in bigger podcasts. It's just interesting that there is a place mm -hmm. for unique voices, mm -hmm. even if somebody out there has already said right. or some version of you know what you want to say. Mm -hmm. It's not the case, that, and and it makes sense. You, you look at television stations; not everybody is watching the best show out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the best shot there isn't the best shot there for the next guy, so it's interesting that people are unique and interesting and unusual, and you may be a better fit for somebody than yes. somebody who's you know just unquestionably good at what they do, right. whether it's Joe Rogan or Dave Rubin or Tim Ferriss or Sam Harris, or you could go on and on with the names, mm -hmm. and you think oh, those people are so good, why am I even bothering? And it turns out, yeah, but they're not doing what I'm doing. And they can't do exactly what I'm doing. Because you're you. And, you're what I, and you have your own. Is who I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and it turns yeah. out that actually. Yeah, it turns out that means I'm bringing something different to the table. And that may be of value to people in a way that uh, 
apparently only I can bring it. I agree. Well, and that's one thing I love talking to you at the GLOW meetings is you always brought a very interesting perspective on almost any topic. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you decided to do this. Well, so. Thank you. I, I might not be right, but I'll definitely be different. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you can be no, no. <laughs> you, well you, i guess you can be the same but uh don't be so uh we like your unique uh mind and how it works so. thank you john so anyway well um thanks guys uh this has been a lot of fun so um a little bit different than my usual uh podcast but uh i think this is this should be interesting to anybody looking to do that and and uh, probably a little bit off topic from e-commerce in and of itself. We didn't really talk about monetizing and making money off of it, um, but it's there. Uh, I'm sorry. We'll save that for part two. Right, part two. <laughs> Which time we made? We're both, you know, you know, financially uh, <laughs> making a killing at this, right? <laughs> we're we're strictly uh, Patreon and PayPal at this point. Oh yeah, okay. We get those numbers up to get that YouTube money. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, you, yes, you do. You gotta, you gotta yeah. get them up there. YouTube so. stash. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, and, and I looked at YouTube. It takes a uh, thousand subscribers and 4,000 watched hours in the last year. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm getting close in subscribers, watched hours. I still got a ways to go. So um, <laughs> it's tough. It's tough. But fortunately, people are willing to chip in in other ways until then. Oh, yeah. So, so again, our podcast is named Five Minutes with Robert Naser. Right. You. My marketing manager. Please yeah. subscribe. Yes. <laughs> and where can they find that? It sounds like YouTube, Facebook, anywhere else. That's right. YouTube and Facebook for now. We'll be on Apple Podcasts within two weeks. Okay. Okay. That, that turns out to be an interesting process, too, which I'm sure Zoom's not going to give us time to cover. But for now, YouTube.com slash Robert Naser. Okay. And SIR. And you do a Google search and it all comes up. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Well, thanks, guys. Um, and uh, I will call it a day. Excellent. Great. We appreciate it. Have a great, great one. Great to talk John. to you, John. Bye, great guys.